All right, welcome to my software demonstration on how to make sections in Revit. And so this is an example of a full section for a house that we did for last year. So I'll just kind of zoom in on this a little bit and you can see some of the detail, but we cut a section all the way through the width of this house. And then there's a, a lot of detailing that you have to do. Uh, some detail lines, some regions, inserting some components, putting some dimensions, some notes, and some things like that in there. So I wanted to just show you this real quick. And of course, uh, if you're a student of mine, you have access to this drawing. Just go and open it up off the R drive. And so what we're going to work on today is a, kind of a smaller project in scope, but it follows the same principles. So this is another house that we've been working on. So we're going to do a wall section for this house. And let me zoom in on this a little bit so you can kind of read that. But We've got a roof, how our roof attaches to our wall, and then we just happen to cut a section to where it goes through a window. So you see a window there, bottom of the wall, the insulation of the wall, and then the foundation, along with the foundation wall and the floor and some sand and some dirt, notes and things like that. So this is what we're going to be working on today. So again, if you're a student of mine, you have access to this, just go ahead and uh, pull that up so you can be following along. So if we jump over to Revit, so this is the Habitat for Humanity three-bedroom house that we've been working on together as a group. And so you should have this project. The only thing that I've done is I added these foundation walls. So hopefully you can add those in. They're just 12-inch thick walls, and you just add them in from the bottom of footing level up to the top of slab level. Okay. So once you get those in there, then we're ready to cut a section. So we'll go to this uh, top of slab level that we're working on. And all we want to do is cut a section. So anything that has anything to do with a view is on your view tab. So you come over to the view tab, click on section. If you look in here, you've got a couple of options. You've got a building section and a wall section. Uh, when you cut a section all the way through the width of your house, you'll use building section. For this, we're just going to do a wall section, so I'll just select wall section. I'm going to come in here to my house, just anywhere, and I'm going to find this window right here. So I'm going to click a point above and then click a point below so that it goes through that window. This is your view box as far as how far back into the model that your view, that your view is going to look. So you can drag that back and forth, and you can drag this if you want it to cut farther. And really all we're worried about is just this wall. So I'm just going to drag it, something like that. And then if I click off of that, now I'm ready to start going to my section and start working with it. So you can actually go right to a section just by double-clicking on this triangle. So I'll just double-left-click there. It takes me into my section. And so this is what's created just based off of the model that we have already created. So this box... Right there, that's your crop box. So if you look over here in your view properties, you've got a few options here. So you've got annotation crop, you've got crop region visible and crop view. So right now I wanna take that crop region and just extend it out so I can see more of this actual model. And then I can come back later and adjust that as I need to. You'll also notice that your level of detail you want your level of detail set to be fine. This is a detail view. We want to see as much detail as we can. And then the next thing we should do before we go too much further is set this scale so when we're working with our notes and our dimensions that they are an appropriate size. So to do that, we just have to have a sheet. Okay. So I'm going to right click there on my sheet in my project browser, click on new sheet. All I have in here right now is a B size, so I'm going to go ahead and click on load. This takes me out to where all my families are loaded. I right hear on my hard drive. And so we've got a folder down here at the bottom called title blocks. If you find your D size title block in there, hit open. That'll bring it in. Hit OK. Now you've got a D size title block. Now we can drag that view over and drop it. So if you look over here in your project browser, you've got your sections, a wall section. Right now it's just called section two. 
I'll just left click and drag that in here and place it. And then it looks like I can make this a little bit bigger. So I'll just select the view by clicking on it. Come on over here into the view properties, select the scale. I can change it up to three quarters of an inch. And that looks like that'll fit just fine. So we'll leave that as three quarters of an inch equals a foot. If I need to rename the view, I can just right click on it over here in the project browser, do rename. I can call this wall section. And then if you need to rename the sheet, we can come on down here to the bottom, find under sheets, right click on that, do rename. And so if we wanted to make this a 105, and if we wanted to make this our sections and details, we can go ahead and type that in. You'll notice how that information updates here for sheet name and sheet number. All right, so now back to our section. So just find that wall section over here in your project browser, double click on it, and it will take you there. Now we can start working on this. So just a few things. One is inserting some detail items. So we've got our siding layer, we've got our sheathing, we've got our gypsum board, uh, but I usually just draw over the top of those and then I hide my wall when I'm done. So to do that, all this stuff's gonna be under annotate because it's all view specific, just like our dimensions are. They only show up in the view in which we create them. So under annotate, you'll find component, and we're going to be inserting detail components. So you'll click on that, come on over here to properties. You'll see there's not a whole lot preloaded in this project. So we'll come on up, click on load family, and everything that you can load is going to be in this detail items folder. So if you click on that, open it up, and then just start looking through here. Remember the search function that I showed you earlier in the year? That would be handy to use at this time as well as you're trying to figure out where this stuff's at. For instance, uh, if I just wanted a piece of uh, two by four or two by six cut in section, I know that's gonna be in division six wooden plastic. Once I get in here, it's gonna be under wood framing. And then I've got cut and side, cut and top, cut and section. So I know I'm gonna need some of that. So I'll go ahead and hit open there. And then it asks me which sizes. Uh, I'll probably need a two by four. And you know, I might need a two by six, might need two by eight, two by 10. So I'll just hold down control as I select those other rows and I'll hit okay. And it loads all those in for me. So I'll set over here in my properties, I'll set it to a, looks like this is actually a two by six wall. So we'll do two by six over there. Come down here to the bottom of my wall, I hit space bar so that it rotates my detail component. Place it here at the bottom, and I have one there. Come on up here to the top of my wall. And the way we've got the top of this wall is our roof's gonna come across here and it's gonna be even with that level. So I'm gonna have a double top plate. So I'll pop one in there and then pop a second one in there and then just hit escape to get out of it. Something else we kind of talked about earlier on in the semester is under the view tab on thin lines. So if your model looks like this and everything's nice and thick and you want it to be thin lines so that you can see that you're getting this placed at the right spot, just click on thin lines there and then it will stay at that. So what I was talking about as far as the search function, if you go to your desktop, I had uh, suggested to you earlier in the year to create a keyboard shortcut or a... Um, desktop shortcut to find your Revit content. And so if you go out here and find it and open it up, let me find mine, there it is. We call it Revit Families. And again, the location of this is right there. So it's uh, for us, C, Program Data, Autodesk, RVT, 2016, Libraries, US Imperial. So if you just double click on that, it takes you right to all those families. So you can go to detail items and then say you wanted to find gypsum board. You could type in gypsum and it's gonna show you exactly where it's at. So it's under detail items, division nine and then 092900 gypsum board. So that works pretty handy to be able to find this stuff. So come on back to annotate 
click on detail component, click load family. Once you get out here, you're going into detail items. And then there was supposed to be one for gypsum board. That right there under division 09 finishes. And then we've got 092000 plaster and gypsum board. We've got gypsum board. And then my gypsum wall board section. I click on that, hit open. And then it brings in a bunch of different sizes for me. We were using half inch on the inside of these walls. So I'll select half inch there. I've got half inch that goes across my ceiling. So I'll start it there and then I'll just pull it out here anywhere. And you don't see it over here because the view is being cropped. So I've got that coming across for my ceiling. And then I will click here and bring this down. I just need to hit spacebar to fix the orientation so it goes to the other side. And then I can bring this piece all the way down. And I want it to stop about, uh, about an inch off the floor because it's not going to go all the way to the floor. So just in here anywhere, and I'll go ahead and click there. So that's got my gypsum board. So I think you kind of get the idea for adding in those detail components. Just go through components, just find where it's at, load it in, and then use it as you need to. So then a few other things are some regions. So I've got my, my floor in here. I've got my foundation wall in there. See, I need to adjust my floor some. My floor should stop right at the edge of this foundation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll do that later. But then I'm going to put some sand in here. So for sand, you're going to go in through regions. So this is going to be a filled region. Remember to always set your line styles over here. So since this is going to be show, shown in cut, it's going to be a wide line. So I'll use SATC wide. Come on over here. These are your preloaded patterns. If you don't have what you want, just select one. Click on edit type. Brings you out here. Click on duplicate. And I'm going to make this my sand pattern. So I'll do sand, SATC, hit OK. Then here in my fill pattern, I can click in that cell, click on the ellipsis over here on the right. Takes me out here. If I look down through here, I can find a couple of sand patterns. I'll go ahead and do sand dense and see what it looks like. So I'll select that one, hit OK. Everything else there is going to be all right. I'll hit OK there. And now I'm ready to draw in my pattern. So with sand, we usually do uh, four inches of sand. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. Everything else looks good. I'll start it right here at the bottom. And again, I'm just going to bring it out over here. The distance doesn't really matter because I'm cropping the view anyway. So it looks like I can only make it six inches at this uh, as far as I was zoomed in. So I'll just click there. Come on over here. Select my bottom line. And then just type in a 0, 4 for that dimension. And that will give me a 4 inch pattern. Yeah, I think that will work. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. And then there is my sand with some medium line or with some wide lines. If you want to see that line weight, you can come on over to view. Click on thin lines. And that shows you what that's going to look like with, a, with the line weight applied to it. Okay. So go ahead and do that. I place those regions wherever you need them. Last few things here are some, uh, some notes, some dimensions. And so I'm actually running out of time since I'm limited to 15 minutes. So I'm going to close this video off and we'll start up a new one. So uh, be looking for the Section 2 video. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the second one as much as you enjoyed the first one. Thanks.